Calling the meeting of the Town of Whitley Select Board of Order is 602. First item in the agenda is to review and vote on the meeting minutes from January 30th meeting. Any comments? No comments. No comments. The motion is not I move to approve the meeting minutes from January 30th, 2024. I move seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Member Paywall warrants any comments? No comments. No comments. Moving on. Public comment. Do we have any comments from the book on anything not on the agenda? We had a letter about the Waitley Postal Code, and I know we kind of left that hanging after um, we had uh, uh, expressed an, uh, someone wanting us to actually take that up and, and make a decision on it. And this is something yeah. someone had mentioned to me. And um, I'm going to throw this out there. It could be a horrible idea, but could there be something on the town meeting ballot for people to be able to oh. express an opinion? I feel like you know, we've had a, we've had one meeting here. We had one meeting um, in the town hall, and uh, we got very different vibes from the two. Um, and it might be that in one case it was people who were very supportive were at one meeting and people who were not very supportive were at the other meeting and I don't really have a good sense of how the town feels as a whole on this and I feel like we're sort of not you know I, I don't have the information I would need to make a decision mm -hmm. um, well, on what's best for the town just because I don't really feel like I know how the town feels about it. Town meeting would certainly be a larger number of people. We often have, you know, two to three hundred people at a town meeting, mm -hmm. which is a lot more than we had at any of the other meetings. I'm wondering if, what do people think about maybe putting a question? Um, it could be an on by an advisory question. It could be um, something because we're, we're looking for input. Uh, I I still sort of feel like I need some input. I don't know what you all think. I don't know the town meeting. I think you know, sending out a questionnaire or something. I think there are too many different potential solutions that could frame it as a warrant article. Or we we, we have advisory things on there where we advise our state reps to do one thing or another. We advise our Congress to do one thing or another. Our Congress is here, Jessica. Um, we're hoping to have a meeting and maybe we'll zoom out. Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. I think it's completely okay to use town meeting as a way. We did it for the town hall. We've mm -hmm. got people um, coming in and out to, to say what they thought about the town hall. We also did that on one election day, let people, you know, give us feedback on um, that sort of thing. So I, I just I just feel like um, I, I I wanted to kind of figure out a way to pick that up again and get some better information. Mm -hmm. I no. feel like we do have a fair amount of information from both of those meetings. Yeah. I think what I've ended up with is the idea that we're probably going to make 40% of the people unhappy, no matter which way we go, um, mm -hmm. because there were very strong proposals right. and arguments on both sides. I, I think town meeting at first I thought that was a great idea and then I thought man that's the way to make the town meeting last until midnight because everybody's going to have something to say about it and I wonder if there's um, a different forum to take it up again or if there's a way to take it up simply with the ballot without discussion. Uh my concern is that we're getting a hornet's nest. That doing my main concern is that the common quickly post office stale. That is that, 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 that has nothing to do. No, it has, not, it has everything to do. Okay. With it. I, 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 I think that because I think because I think if we go to the post office and say we would like to do this with our zip code. I don't uh, want to look. I want to stay out of off the radar you, uh, completely. You know, we will not agree on that. Yeah. That has never come up in in their 
talks about what they're going to do about closing or opening a, a post office. So I vehemently disagree with you. But there are a lot of people who really want to get a unified I don't one. And, and every single time I rank stinking South Deerfield 01373 mm -hmm. as my home address, I think about how I just, I just wish we were all one town. I wish we were and, too. But I, and I, the people who got the ambulance sent to the wrong town. I think those are things that we really have to be thinking about. Is and, there a way then to bring this to another select board meeting uh, on the agenda yeah. and have well, a longer no, discussion yeah, and yeah, go, maybe. dive yeah. back into yeah. 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 that hornet's And it says. might, yeah, I, I, and I understand, you know, you, you were all at a meeting that I was not able yeah. to attend where lots of angry people showed up, but just the angry people who thought some, who were there, you didn't really have the balance, I don't think, at that meeting. Um, so I, I guess I'm. you say it's 40% and 40%, which doesn't add up to 100. No, it's 20% who don't care. Yeah, I'm just But I, I don't know yes. that. I don't know if it's 40%. Yeah. I don't know if it's just a very loud 10%. And, that's true. And that's, yeah. so, I don't know, I'm throwing that out there as a possibility. Um, we don't have to, we don't have to take it up ever. That's just what I think. Mm -hmm. I think okay. we can't just ignore it. And we did get a very thoughtful and well-worded letter that, yes, I'm glad you brought it up so we yeah. can talk about it. Okay. We will have a discussion on that at the future select board meeting. Okay. Uh, we have a public hearing scheduled for the license application to store propane at 41 River Road. Uh, we'll have a motion to open the public hearing. We uh, we open the public hearing. Uh, okay. License to store propane at 41 River Road. Do we have anyone who wants to speak on this? Good evening, folks. Um, I'm Jeff Farrell. I'm the project manager for North Farms. Yeah. As everybody knows, we're looking to expand the greenhouse facility down on the River Road. Mm -hmm. Um, we have contracted at Jonathan Smith and Hills Propane out of Pennsylvania to install a 30,000 gallon propane storage tank. Since we don't have propane in that area or even natural gas in that area, maybe something that's going to run our, our furnaces or there's yeah. um, Jonathan has all of our information and our layout of what we're going to do here. Um, Chief has looked over it with us. Does anybody have any questions on anything about it? And you should probably let John speak to it. Yeah, John yeah. To speak to it as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. Um, Ledger, I'm Jonathan Smith, a professional engineer, um, licensed in the state of Massachusetts. I just wanted to introduce our company, Hilt Propane Systems. Uh, we provide engineering and installation of large propane tanks right throughout the Northeast. Um, so this is nothing new for us. This is a rather simple project for us. Uh, we install all our systems in accordance with NFPA 58, and uh, which aligns with the National Fire Code, and as well as the local authority having jurisdiction, uh, which in this case would be the state fire marshal. So we would go through all the proper processes to make sure that um, this is fully licensed and and up to up to speed for for what's required um, from the state of Massachusetts. Uh, the scope for this project would be to install a 30,000 gallon propane tank to, as mentioned, to fuel the, the boiler system at Norris Farms at uh, 40 River Road. Propane tank will be approximately 46 feet by 11 feet uh, installed on precast concrete piers, uh, about three feet off the ground. So not, not too high, not too obtrusive. Uh, it will also be fenced in as well as have crash protection. So making sure we're safe on that side. Um, and throughout our process, we, we do everything we can to ensure we meet code and even go above and beyond and, and on the safety side. So we'll, we'll complete a fire safety analysis, which will be reviewed by the state fire marshal, uh, adhere to all the setback requirements um, and have emergency shutdowns and, and whatever is required uh, according to NFPA 58. So that's just the, the basic scope of what we'll be doing. Like I said, this is a pretty straightforward cut and dry project for us. Um, and if you have any technical questions or any questions regarding the project, please let us know. Uh, one Thank question you. I have, how, how high is, how tall is the tank 
and how high is the fence? The, the fence, house? the fence is six foot fence, and then the tank would be, I guess, it would be 11, 14 feet. Okay, so you can easily see the tank over. You would need to see the tank, yeah, and and that also comes down to fire protection as well. In in case you know they want to see, be able to see it, so you don't want a fence that goes too high that you wouldn't be able to access it. Do we have a map that's slightly zoomed out and can give a better idea of the location? In the I top left corner, there's there's a little bit of a better picture of oh, there. Yep. Yeah, okay. Thank I'll you. That. So that might help. I'm pretty unfamiliar with something like this. What, Brian or anybody or fire chief, what kinds of groups do folks have to jump through in order to um, let us know that they've complied with everything environmental, everything you know, about zoning, everything about fire safety? I'm sure you can speak to that. Um, who who has a yeah, say? Who right. has a say in this besides? Yeah. I I can yeah I can take that one. So once once we have approval from the select board, uh, I'll put together all the documentation required, and it will actually be submitted to the state fire marshal, who will do a, a very thorough review of everything. Uh, there'll be you know pressure testing. There will be further inspections required. Uh, so the final say would come down to the state fire marshal, um, who would who would do the review, and then it would go back to the local fire department to do a an additional inspection as well. Um, so there'd be, I believe, two more inspections on this project uh, once it's installed. So there would be another, uh, after this process, there would be another level of, of approvals. And we've, we've worked with the state fire marshal in Massachusetts a couple of times. So he's familiar with our process and what we submit. And um, we've had a, a couple of projects approved by him already. Is this subject to periodic inspections by the by our fire chief? Yeah, I, believe Annual in, or... I, I believe in the, in a, having a good relationship with the local fire department, uh, regardless of what you know requirements they are. So I mean, it would not hurt to have you know even the local fire department out on site just to see what's there, to see where the emergency stops are. You know, if if anything happened. In, in the event of a something like that, um, which I don't imagine there would be, but you know, it's always good to have that relationship and have them trained in that particular in case. It's good, but not required. I, I believe there is a requirement for, for inspections. I don't know if it's the local fire department that would do that or okay. the state fire marshal. I did speak, yeah, I was gonna ask you to speak to this. Yeah, I think I'd be happy to speak, uh, speak in support of the, the um, the review and the approval of the project. This, as was stated, it's not a particularly uncommon um, installation, especially given the shortage of natural gas in, um, in our area. Um, I do have some experience in other with other uh, installations, albeit not this, this large, but they all operate on the same principle. And I'm confident that with um, adequate planning and you know a good SOG, a good standard operating guideline for you, uh, for door to farms when they're you know, refueling and maintaining the site uh, would not anticipate any problems. Um, we would have uh, periodic training on, at the site for our personnel in the fire department. Uh, presumably that would be annual, but that's something that we could work out with you. Um, and uh, yeah, so we so we would do uh, you know on annual inspections, uh, on-site inspections. Um, in cooperation and um, conjunction with the, the state, um, as you stated earlier. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident that uh, the installation will go off without a, without a problem. Okay. I'm um, curious about the environmental, the potential environmental impacts, if there's ever a leak. Um, so, I can speak brief, very briefly to it and feel free to add, add on if, if you want, but mm -hmm. um, there's two types of gas that we use as fuels, you know, in this area. So we have natural gas and we have propane. Mm -hmm. um, natural gas is lighter than air, it's gonna rise. 
propane is heavier than an air. It's, if there was a leak, it would settle and find the lowest point. Um, the the, um, the thing that we would be concerned about and you know train on and, and that you would have planning for um, is if there was a leak, where would that natural where would that propane go? It's going to settle to the lowest points, um, and they're going to take you know all the precautions that they need to um, to monitor that and have a plan in place of what they would do if they had a leak. Um, I think that the area where the the tank is the grade is lower than the road there. Uh, do you know how much lower the, than the road the grade is? You're probably four feet. Yeah, four feet. Yeah, four so feet. The, so the propane is going to follow the, the contour of the land. It's going to it's going to find the lowest point, and it's going to um, kind of behave almost like water if you would, if you would think of that. Uh, so the chances yeah. of it going back over the road are relatively small unless you have a strong prevailing wind or something like that. Is the fence permeable? Yes. You want to add something to that? John? No, I'm kind of just agreeing that yes, it's, it's permeable. I'm more concerned about groundwater. If there's a leak. So, so you want to uh, that, John? Go ahead. if you have something, go ahead there. No, I'll, I'll let you go ahead. So oh, okay. Um, Pro propane, it boils at a very low temperature, so it would start out as liquid in the tank when it's pressurized, but as it comes out, it actually um, becomes vapor, and given the chemical bonds, um, it actually wouldn't, it would just vaporize and it, I mean, become a gas and dissipate. It would not mix in with any water. It, you know, the chemical balance of it wouldn't, wouldn't mix in. So it would just you know, sort of evaporate and become you know, part of the Part of the air. Part of the <laughs> air we breathe. All right. It'll actually freeze. It'll actually freeze the ground. If there was a liquid leak, it would freeze the ground uh, due to the moisture in the ground. I'll just say right off the bat that this having been the first time it's come before us, I believe, I'm I'm very hesitant about a propane tank of that size in our town. Um and I'm hesitant about making an approval or non-approval decision about it this evening. Um, like I said, I'm I'm not familiar with this. It just the size of it makes me gasp with potential for trouble. Uh, I'm sure you you're good engineers, and I'm sure that you'll take every precaution. And it's still, um, yeah, I'm surprised that it's not solar, actually. No, I don't it's it's, out all the time. I, I believe you need a fuel. I, I don't know that solar would work in a case like this. You would need fuel to to power the boiler. Okay. Um, and I mean, to be honest, this is a this is one of our smaller tanks. I mean, they they double or triple in size. Um, so this would be considered one of our smaller one. And already at this size, at peak peak performance, um, this this one, you know, it's a big boiler, so it would be using a lot of a lot of propane and you know we don't necessarily want we'll go with a smaller tank we'll have you know trucks in and out there pretty frequently that we you know it would just be unnecessary almost wear and tear on on local roads and things like that so this way we are mitigating that and having a smaller tank wouldn't be make it any safer than the size of this tank um so size and safety are, are kind of irrespective of each other um <laughs> So you have a 90,000 gallon tank, it would be as safe as, probably even safer than a thousand gallon, which is the small local one at, at residentials, because there's so much code required and to make sure it is safe that, uh, you know, I would, I would say these would be even safer than, than local ones um, for, for that reason. So well, I just didn't yeah. hear what you have to say about it. I, well, I don't see a reason to hold this up if they have met to the satisfaction of our fire chief, all of the conditions for safety here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see a, a good reason to hold it up. I mean, I, I wish there was a solar option. I wish there was an right. entirely yeah, renewable, yeah. carbon-free way yeah, yeah. to uh, to do this, and that may be coming in the future. But um, I, I like... I mean, one of the things I noticed was we've got a heat recovery system. 
excellent to make the whole thing much more efficient. Um, or the heat storage. Awesome. Um, but I, I don't see a reason to um to, to block to block this mm -hmm. given we're we're part of a bigger process. Mm -hmm. We're mostly making sure they're obeying local laws. Our fire chief is the one who's assured us mm -hmm. that they are. And um, then they'll have at least one more fire chief to convince. Um, and I, you know, there's there's risk in everything. I, I don't well, I don't worry about the groundwater though, because just because of the chemistry. Okay. Um, because it's really it's, it's either going to come out if it's a liquid in the tank, it comes out as a gas. If that gas somehow condenses, it's on the surface of the ground, um, and it's not going to. Go down into the, into the water. That's, okay. There right. are other things people put down. Don't worry about the groundwater. <laughs> one of the things that, that maybe you understand people, the chemistry better than yeah. I do. One of the things that people don't often think about is we, we sometimes look at an installation and it, it's obviously it, it could be you know concerning because it is a site hazard and something mm -hmm. that we take very seriously. But um, there's a, there's large volumes of flammable liquids and hazardous materials that pass through town on a daily basis. You know, being trucked or by rail. Um, is that supposed well. to soothe me? Both times, you know, we have Route 91, Route 5. This is more yeah, right. dangerous. And, and, okay. and we, have, we have the rail. So the benefit of yeah. having this, um, you know, as a, compared to something that's over the road is that um, this will be regulated fairly heavily and it will receive routine inspections. Uh, I'm not saying that to be to be alarmist, it's just that there is there are lots of other hazards out there as well. Yeah. Okay. Um and I think my final question, being the one who's throwing up roadblocks here, is does this have to go through any kind of environmental or conservation clearance? No. No, it would not need to know. Uh we're also under a very small footprint uh for the propane side of it. <laughs> So it wouldn't trigger any environmental um, permitting on, on the propane side. If the, if the engineering and the safety inspections are good, there should be no environmental impact. Okay. I have asked my questions, and I appreciate all the answers. Thank you. I, I Thank you for your questions. If there is a motion to approve this, that you would incorporate the recommendation of the fire chief that he has. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other comments anyone wants to make on the subject? Then we will we close the public hearing. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any more comments from the board for the discussion? Mm -hmm. Do no. I have a motion? Uh, I think mean, we uh, approve. And now I'm looking for the sheet that says what we can do for you. Um, that approve the license application to store propane at 41 River Road uh, with the. Oh, it's actually at 40 River Road. 40 River Road. Yeah, sorry. Correction. At 40 River Road. Yeah. Um, and i noting that our fire chief, one of these pieces of paper in front of me here, and our fire yeah. chief has. Uh, a letter. Given us a letter uh, explaining which laws and regulations they have complied with, and that these are all the applicable uh, codes, laws, and standards that they should be applied to. Second. Any more discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Done. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate your time. Okay, hey, we've had another public hearing scheduled that has been canceled at the request of the applicant. Uh, next, we've scheduled an appointment for Bill Silverman, who I see on the screen. On the screen. Sorry, I got a glare that can quite clear. Uh, requesting the select board enter into a host of community agreement with Enhanced Delivery LLC for operation of a Marijuana Courier Establishment located at 424 State Road. Mr. Silverman. Thank you. Um, so I think we actually talked about this a couple of months ago um, and, you know, uh, we're authorized to come back and 
uh, speak to Brian about hammering out the details of the host community agreement, which we did. So I think he's probably provided that to you. Um, and uh, we're we're seeking uh, approval of that agreement so that we can go forward uh, at 424 State Road. Happy to take any questions. I have none. I I don't have any questions. I've been through the agreement a million times. Yeah. It's, it's, it's it's what we can it's what we can yeah. have for a community agreement. Um, I think we should have a security agreement because yeah. it helps keep the conversation going. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. There's somebody in the audience who has to speak. I just have a quick question. Um, hi, Phil. I'm Amy Schrader, the treasure collector for Waitley. Um, I just wonder are these individual um, vehicles being used or are these vehicles going to be registered to um, the enhanced delivery LLC? Yeah, they have to be registered to Enhanced Delivery LLC. They're of the company, and they have to follow all of the guidelines of the Cannabis Control Commission. So they have, you know, a, a secure lock box inside uh, where it, uh, the product is stored. They have uh, cameras, GPS systems. There's multiple GPS systems to track the vehicles as they're going. Uh, drivers have um, body cameras. It's quite a bit of regulation around this, but it all... It's all part of the company. Nobody's personal individual vehicle gets used for this. So will they be garaged in Waitley? They they will some will. Um how many vehicles are we talking? Well, so at the beginning, you know, you might be talking about uh four or five vehicles. It may be that as they start making arrangements with other dispensaries that uh, a given dispensary might want to have the vehicle at its dispensary. For example, it might be that, you know, they contract with a Boston dispensary and that Boston dispensary will want to have a vehicle there at their disposal, um, you know, through the company. So, I, you know, I'm sure there will be one or two vehicles in Waitley, but it's possible that there will be others elsewhere as the company grows. Yeah, my concern is just making sure we're getting the appropriate excise tax in for those vehicles if they are garage and wait. So yeah. that's something we maybe right. should keep on our list. Yeah, as soon as Amy said that, I was like, excise tax. <laughs> right. yeah. I just paid that the other day. Uh, okay. So, yeah, and, and so in some ways we benefit from from those vehicles being garaged. As long the as they're registered correctly. And they have to be registered correctly. It has yeah. to say Waitley, not South Airfield. It has to. So okay. Should get, if you I have understand any issues, Phil, I can help you with that. Yeah, if you when you go to register the vehicles, if you come in and visit Amy and make sure everything's filled out right, we will. We sure will. Not a problem. Okay. Any other? Our minds are going to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any other comments? No. No. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we need, might need a motion. Well, I think we might need a motion. I move that we enter into a host community agreement with Enhanced Delivery LLC, the operation of a marijuana courier establishment at 424 State Road, Waitley, Mass. Second. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Good luck with your enterprise. Thank you, Phil. Thank, thank you very much. And, and get those vehicles registered correctly. <laughs> we sure will. Yep. Thank you. Uh, COVID 19s are rapid tests are still available. Town offices at the library and the police station. Uh, item seven old business to review, discuss, and vote whether to support the agricultural preservation restriction proposed for 269 River Road. Well, and we have I think a, it, I, it, the, whatever the appropriate response is to put this forward as saying yes, go to the CPC and ask yeah. for the money if mm -hmm. you can get it from the CPC. I don't think I want to go for trying to do an appropriation not from CPC funds at town meeting. Um, so it might, my thought is I don't see a reason to stand in the way. Of an EPR, you know, we've never been no, having yeah, preservation yeah. restriction. We don't have the funds in our budget to do it, but I would say we uh, maybe the second box is the right one. 
Um, yeah, we, we, have, we have a form from the Department of Agricultural Resources yeah. regarding approval or disapproval of the APR project. But, but I, want, I want them to know that they better go to the CPC because I'm not going there. Brian's not going there. We're not going there. Right. When they say the town will seek approval for this contribution, it really means they got to do the legwork. You guys can do it. You guys right. really got it. So, so I, my, my, that's my one worry about the wording is that it's going to seem like I promised I was going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to go to the CPC on the behalf. Okay, so Brian, if we approve this under the heading of the town of Wake, we will seek approval for this contribution and for the understanding that the applicants will go to CPC, which is where which would be the funding source yeah. from the town for this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Level motion. Yeah. That we uh, ask them to seek approval from the CPC for the funds. We ain't gonna stand on that. I second. And that <laughs> otherwise it has our approval. But otherwise it has our it has sub subject to but not our money. Subject to right. funding by subject CPC. to funding by CPC. Yeah. Okay. All in favor. Aye. 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 Done. Okay. Uh, next item to discuss whether to develop a policy for the display of flags on town owned property. Yeah, yeah and if we keep getting requests. Okay. Well, we've got second multiple requests from the same mm -hmm. private organization that would like to put up a flag, and I don't know that we necessarily want private organizations. Putting up flags on public. Yeah. Right. My understanding is it's up till now. We 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 can say no because our past practice has been we only fly the American flag on our flag poles. Thank you very much. But it might be stronger if we had a policy. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. mm -hmm. and it probably wouldn't be that hard to find a good policy. Um yeah, and we, we need to do a little bit of research and find yeah. Which Someone we, else with yeah. policy, but I think in, 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 in general, the policy should be that we don't fly flags from, from, private, from private organizations or individuals. Mm -hmm. and find a template and work off of that that another town yeah. has done or something. Like that. Well, whose plate would this really be on? Like, would this be on Jessica's plate? Would this be on Sylvie's plate? Or Amy or Amy's plate? Who's paid what it really be on? I think ultimately this would be town clerk who would have to for a policy. Well, not for the I'm sort of working backwards. The town clerk would get the application to fly a flag from an organization. So I would think we have an application for flying a flag. Or, or request. <laughs> whatever, whatever, request. Whatever you want to whatever oh, you want to oh, call. Okay. Whatever you want to call. Um, oh, okay. That the request would likely come into the town club. And mm -hmm. I think. Is that, I mean, is it, is it, do you have the capacity to take on something like that? Yes. So, the, and would you like us to have a policy the or something? The request that you're speaking about was sent to every clerk in Massachusetts. I did, I saw that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So they were just trying to find an A town mm -hmm. I have no problem. Receiving request, I just need you to know what to do with it. But I, the, I'm happy like, to board. pitch in finding and writing an appropriate policy okay. that we can respond to them with. But for now, I mean, it I seems can, that we can say to the, historically we don't fly flags other than right. the American flag. And if you would like, I can reach out to um, the other clerks and see if anybody has a policy yep. that we can. Work off I'd be happy right. to work with you to craft it. Okay. But if I can get a sense of the board, I think the, the guidance from the board at this point, before we have a formal policy, is that we only yeah, we, we do not fly fly from private organizations and never have. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe do you guys yeah. want to put yeah, let's put something together and then we'll put it into the file. Yeah, we can put it into a policy okay. and it's easy to approve and that helps. Right, that'll help you. 
yeah. know what to do. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hey, the help thing. I'm. Yeah. Right. I appreciate your help. <laughs> okay. Okay. Don't think any other action is needed on that. Uh, next time to discuss the idea of a directory sign for the Waitley Industrial Park. Is that you're talking about a sign on town property as opposed to what we talked about last time, which was a sign adjacent to the one that's there now on private property? Yeah, I spoke with Alan Sanderson about the, the existing sign that's there, mm -hmm. which is a cadastral sign, which was a Deerfield Europane sign originally when that company was Deerfield Europane. And um, he showed me that there was an easement agreement between Deerfield European and, and Fairview Farms, which allowed that sign. And the easement allowed for the termination of that sign once there was a directory sign for the industrial park. Mm -hmm. So I guess my recommendation is that we want to guard against sort of sign clutter at the end of that, at, at the intersection of uh, Sandy Lane and Long Plain Road, where Next thing we know, New Pro might want to sign. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Animal Eye Care might want to sign. There's one vacant parcel in the industrial park currently. Yeah. They might want to sign. So it seems like a directory sign makes sense. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the next step would be outreach to the businesses within the park to see if there's interest in a directory sign. But so I think those, I think that would be the next steps. And then we have to figure out costs of mm -hmm. what a directory sign would would be obviously that's going to depend on what it's made of and what it looks like and then looking forward how do we you know how do we how do we handle maintenance and maintenance but the cost what happens if the business if a new business goes in and one comes out now we're going to be changing the you know changing yeah. the sign how do you cover that cost there's cost associated with that though um there's obviously some type of legal agreement that could be entered into to, to handle that but we're really in the early stages of that but it, it yeah, is yeah. really hard yeah, for those yeah. businesses to have i mean there's there's really nobody knows what's down yeah at the end of sandy lane yeah. right uh, yeah so no i i agree i think directory sign is a good idea i think that the businesses that are on it should be paying for it yeah yeah both uh installation and maintenance mm -hmm. and essentially we would provide the land for it to go on yeah. Uh, but I don't think we should be paying for their advertising. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so, I think, I think we, so facilitating that. Whose plate is that going to be on? I know this is a busy season of the year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I think it yeah. would be the, the incoming town administrator. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know that there's a an immediate rush to this. Yeah. Obviously, the business wants. The sign, yeah, and I think there's if it was a, a really urgent issue, I'm sure there's some temporary signage that they might be able to put out at the end of the road. If it was a uh, mm -hmm. you know a huge issue that they could put in the, uh, put out at the beginning of the day and take it at night, but mm -hmm. it hasn't come to that yet. So no, and nothing seems to have happened to make this urgent now. Okay, okay, so if we put on the list for the next person. Mm -hmm. Okay, now on to our second number seven, new business uh, to discuss the schedule of the treasurer collector position. We have the treasurer collector here to talk about. Yes, that. yes. Um, so in front of you, you have a formal request to change, um, to potentially change my weekly scheduled hours. Um, this is not to increase or decrease hours, it's just to change the schedule. Um, above, you'll see that you have my current schedule, um, which is Mondays, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., and we're closed on Fridays. Um, I'm requesting um, the schedule be changed to Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m., uh, Tuesday, 8.30 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Fridays, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, this is all really due to personal reasons, um, essentially to accommodate my children's schedules a little bit better. Um, however, a lot of these changes took place before uh, the new business item 7F, um, which is the transition of our town administrator. So I am still more than willing to help out any way possible. Um, this was even drafted before, um, you know, that change um, happened. So I just... This is just a tentative review 
that mm -hmm. schedule change. Um, if you, you know, if there's any help needed elsewhere, I am here for the town. I I actually I like the change because it provides some hours on Friday mm -hmm. that we don't currently just, have, so we don't have people yeah. just showing up thinking, oh, they'll be open Friday. Right. Right. And then Tuesday, there's a late night. There's right. one night that's later than the rest. That, right. Yeah. That would be helpful to people as well. Yeah, I think it's so better scheduled than that now. Okay. As far as yeah. Great. And we'll always happy to support working parents. Yes. Mm -hmm. Both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, so, um, do we need a motion on this? Or um, what about is the first reply? Question mark. What? You forgot to mute. Okay. Um, yeah, I, do you want a motion on it, Amy? I'm sorry, what was that? Do you need us to, do we need to vote on this or is this or a speaker? Just something or you can implement. Yeah, if she wants, if something she can implement. Yeah. Yeah, do you want you want, you want to hear any up from us? Go for right. it. Yeah, Thank I'll do you. it. Yeah, I'll change the sign on the door though. I'll do that. <laughs> oh, never mind. Just do it. So wait, how many times? Okay. Um, for the morning, it looks like no. I'm fine. Yeah, that's uh, totally fine. We'll work on just changing the sign together. Oh, yeah. wait, that's yeah. what is okay. actually happening. Okay. 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 Next time, yeah. to review, discuss, and vote whether to sign the election warrant for the March 5th, 2024 presidential primary. Well, I think we should sign. That, I think we should sign. I well. do too. Yeah. My movie there you go. I second. <laughs> 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 Sorry to add All in. Motion. All right. <laughs> Proper motion. Um, I move that we sign the motion, sign the election warrant, election warrant for um, presidential primary. Um, is that, is that, is, that's all I have to say, right? For the primary, March 5th. Yeah. For the March, oh, sorry, for the March 5th, 2024 presidential primary election. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry to spring it last minute. It's due <laughs> the 27th. And so that, like, they have to be posted by the 27th. Mm -hmm. So that right. the timing just didn't work out for the next meeting. Okay. Next item to review, discuss, and vote and to participate <coughs> in the FY25. ERCOT Collective Highway Bid Program. And what Frank W. So the town participates in the collective highway bidding. And really what we're asking now is for the selector to authorize a signatory on the uh, for the contracts that are going to come out of that mm -hmm. bid process. There's somewhere between 10 to 12 contracts that usually come through DocuSign. Mm -hmm. And in the past, I have been the signatory, so it will be good to have somebody else that's a signatory, uh, but that will just come through email and then because do the electronic process to sign. Okay. So it's a fairly simple process. But that's we need to, to, we to, to need to designate an individual as opposed to an office. A name is, so yeah, so they, so you want, you, you should name individual and then list their email address. So the name will be the yeah that would be the name on the agreement that you authorize. Now, is it more appropriate for that to be a town employee or should it be an elected official? Or it, I think it could be either. It, I mean, keep makes sense. Yeah. When I think a, about it, because I didn't know if there's any kind of conflict there. Yeah, then that makes the most sense to me. If he's willing, it's a great idea. It's a fairly uh, small ask. Should we have a problem? We can always change it at the next. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I assume so, that this is not a permanent. Do we need a vote on this? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I move that we participate in the fiscal year 25 Burkhoff Collective Highway Bid Program and that Keith Bardwell. As highway superintendent, will be the signatory. Second. Any further discussion? All no. 
In favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. Next item to review, discuss, and vote whether to request a hearing on the application for a keynote to be played at Club Castaways located at 226 State Road. All right, here's a completely naive question. What's Kino? It's a very mild form of gambling. Uh-huh. Ain't yes. ever played yes. it. I've heard of it, but I ain't never game. played it. Two your numbers. Yeah. yeah That's all I know. <laughs> yeah, I've never played it myself either. And it's That's sort a play. It, yeah, <laughs> sort of lottery. A lottery-like gambling game often played at modern casinos and also offered as a game in some lotteries. Okay. Yes, yeah, sir. all right. Yeah, so uh, back the version that I know is that you, you have a slip, you slip of paper, and you, you, know, the, you uh, write something on it. It bubbles hey, you know, the numbers that you think, and then there's a screen, and the numbers go by on the screen, and you spend hours of your day staring at the screen, hoping your numbers come up. Okay. <laughs> Each time losing money because. <laughs> uh -huh. You see, the lottery's not in it to lose money, so. Mm -hmm. All righty. It'll be the, it'll be a, a calm form of entertainment for that place. Let's put it that way. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, with me. Any, I don't, I don't any know. questions or comments? So it, it says whether to request a hearing on the application. If we don't have a hearing, we're just saying we're fine with it. Um, so, so the town has a right to claim a hearing, uh, um, to ask for a hearing with the lottery commission. If it objects to the mm -hmm. the issuance of the license and through the laws written that in order for the town to object, it needs to have a an offer uh, mm -hmm. the applicant has due process rights where mm -hmm. they need to come before the board and, and be able to explain the what they want to do and why they want to do it. Yeah. But if, yeah. if there's really no issue, I don't think we want to request a hearing. I don't yeah. That is yeah. that require a motion. Do we have to deny the or to we're hearing to say we're not going to request a hearing, or we just we're not going to take I, I, any action. Therefore, we're not having a hearing. So you can take no action. You know, we have twenty one. The, the town has twenty one days to respond, and if it does not respond, then it's okay. Then we will take no action. Yeah, and we'll, the application moves forward. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? Nope. We'll move along. Review, discuss, and vote whether to appoint poll workers as requested by the county clerk. Well, I think that sounds like a good idea. I think <laughs> I recognize many poll, poll workers are good things. Poll yeah. workers are excellent okay. things. I will take as many as I can get this year. Yeah, I imagine. I, I assume uh, Jackson is a relative. And yeah, so uh, under Jackson is my son, and he has to do 60 hours of community service for National Honor Society and working an election as long as I'm not. On the ballot is one of them. Oh, great. And he will cool. be unpaid because it's community service. Okay. Okay. Excellent. That's uh, I, I was I was I was wondering if the volunteer unpaid was conflict of interest related, but it's not no. Right? no. And okay. these and these cover all elections coming up this year, which there yeah, will be so several. Yeah. I have a I have a list already that you guys appointed in the fall. Yeah. But because we have so many and we have so much going on, I'm just trying to have a, a, a big bank pool that I can pull from so we can have enough coverage for everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. I move that we appoint the poll workers as requested by the town clerk. I'll second that. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mm -hmm. To discuss next steps for filling the impending town administrator vacancy. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Um, what do you want to do? Well, what are we doing? I hear well, cloning is coming along <laughs> very nicely. No, it says, I mean, are there, are there, <laughs> there are people who, who do things like the interim town administrators. And I don't know, I don't know what their list service, but I know well, there's one a few years back in Deerfield, the woman named Mindy Foxman. She did a good job there. And if she were available, I wouldn't have any hesitation in seeing if she could hmm, fill in for whatever time period. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's our budget season, and right. that's the um, 
Uh, and that's really important to have some of these on top of it. Yeah, so the, the timing of that for the budget, I should have the first, I should have the first draft on and submit to the finance committee. So at that point, it's going to be tweaking the budget and through their interviews with the department heads. When is your last day? Uh, March 4th. Okay. It's also just setting up a procedure for, I think, for a while, Brian, here, you can get the vacancy open, you know, publicize on whatever grapevine listservs are out there for administrators. But I think we should probably also set up the procedure for have, you know, having probably a search committee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to for 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 the longer term. But I I really think we should try to hire somebody who can fill in for a few months immediately. Immediately. Yeah. yeah. Yes. No. No. I, no. I I agree. I think that's the, the, the more urgent problem. But yes, obviously the, we have to. It, it's it's a two prong problem. We need an mm -hmm. interim person and we need a permanent person. Yeah. Has anybody? Put this bug in Lynn's ear. Yes. Yes. And did, did she like run from the room screaming? Yes, there's a bug in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> there's certain aspects of it that I think she'd be willing to help out with, and there's certain aspects that um, would not. Um, I put this nicely. <laughs> She would not want to do. She doesn't. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been a while since she was that kind of administrator. Yeah. And I know there were parts of the job that were very frustrating. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I mean, I'm not surprised. <laughs> if you put a bug in her ear and she was sort of mad about it, does she have other suggestions? Um. I mean, the other option, is, depending on, on on the length of what we think the interim, mm -hmm. you know, position is going to be, it, there's a it's possible that we could split up the different tasks with with the folks who are here, um, you know, to to get us through that whatever it is two month period. Mm -hmm. yeah. We we hope it's only two months. And yeah, it doesn't drag out longer. So so that's the other option. If if, if if we can't find somebody from the outside or or if it's gonna be you know it, it it's gonna take if we get from somebody from the outside, mm -hmm. it's gonna take them a little while to get caught up with what's going on. I guess mm -hmm. that's my concern about right. bringing some someone from yeah. the outside. Whereas everybody here is really already involved and already knows what's mm -hmm. going on. Yeah. So, yeah, it would have to be a very knowledgeable person who has been in town and here before. Um, yeah, and I, I think that would mean it's, it's a very small set of people who have those skills and might be available. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know that there's anything available. And I only happen to know one name of one person who might be in that list. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah and, and again, I, I guess my opinion is depending on the length of time. If it's going to be a, a month or two, I think, and if people are willing here, mm -hmm. of course, um, that they could cover. But if it's going to be a, uh, a time beyond that, then I think yeah, it will be a little bit harder to ask. Yeah, to ask yes. us. Mm -hmm. I certainly by July 1st, if not by June 1st. Yeah, I, I think we need to get, but it's, it's two different problems that mm -hmm. we're facing. Mm -hmm. I think we need to put out a call, you know, put out a call, let this be known there's a vacancy, get some resumes in. And see how many we get, and mm -hmm. how, you're talking how, about how long term or short term? Long term for the long term. For the long term, the long -term. Okay. Okay. Yeah. right? Um, and short term, can you reach out to the single name that you have and find out if right. and ability and interest? I, 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 it's not and, on speed dial. Yeah, you and or she has. We're friends on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I? So I would recommend oh. that in accordance with the personnel policy, if, if you were going to hire an interim from the outside, you would want to post that position. Mm -hmm. So oh, okay, okay. get somebody in here. So yeah. and, and then see what 
But the other thing I feel like I can ask her is, what do you think the chances are we're going to find somebody who could do a good job and do their thoughts on short notice and so on? Because one thing, she'll, she, she doesn't do this. She's, yeah. she's, she's direct. Well, he, and part, of, part of the problem is that we don't know how long it's going to take to find mm -hmm. full time. If, right. if it is but a it, month or yeah. two, then we can probably work with internal you know, and people, I think that, yeah, yeah. spot. If it's going to be six months, you should probably have someone in. Right. And it may be, yeah, the candidate who can't start until June 1st or mm -hmm. July right. 1st or something like that. But that's why I think it's important to get moving yeah. on the process but quickly for the full time right. to get an idea yeah. of yeah. what level of candidate right. we're getting. And yeah. does, and this, I, does this look like it's going to be quick or? Yeah. And I think we should assume that it's not going to be quick no. and act as if mm -hmm. and try to get somebody in to fill the position and with assistance from folks who are already mm -hmm. here who know what they're doing. Um, but rather than leaving you in the position yeah. of, you know, two months out suddenly scrambling and going, we don't have anybody right. yet, can I mean, Chris, it, yeah. keep, keep doing it. Yeah. I mean, in some ways, it's kind of not fair. I know everybody who Step, step up and, and yeah, do the remember. extra hours and so on, but it's the uh, and things will fall through the cracks. And we do want to know as long as that is possible. I think we should see an interim person as who is not at all. Yeah. And, and uh, then, knowing that that might not even be possible. Right. right. And, right. If, and if your candidate's person. not willing, maybe she's got other suggestions or. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do know that Lynn Sibley does have some suggestions. I'm not sure. If oh, the okay. chair. Oh, maybe you want to speak to her about about yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, okay, so just, just okay. Idea. Well, let me put Lynn first on my list. Okay. Uh, of people to talk to. Are you the designated reacher outer? Uh, for the for the short term. Yeah. So what, the, the last okay. time. I, that I was on the select board when we were trying to hire a town administrator. Mm -hmm. I happened to be chair, and it was Mark Krohensky who we ended up hiring. Mm -hmm. um, but it took a little, I mean, it, you have to post a job, you've got to get applications in. Mm -hmm. uh, what we did was um, we had one select board member, and I don't know, I, have to go, I might have to go back and look to see, but we we did as much as we could. Um, outside of um, the select board meeting to like get the candidates down to a reasonable number. But I think the law says you have to have the interviews with the entire select board were basically select board meetings. Yep. They did not always take place at six o'clock on a Tuesday. Uh -huh. um, so it's because sometimes we did it during the day to help candidates who were available during the day. Yep. Um, but it had to be a public meeting and then. Uh -huh. And our, um, I think our deliberations were allowed to be an executive session um, about who we were going to make an offer to and so on. But eventually, those become public, okay. um, and that's what I remember. I may have some of those details wrong, um, but that's what I remember. And, it's beneficial yeah. to us that you've had that experience. <laughs> yes, right. I was not on the board when uh, Brian was hired, but that might be he may remember a similar process. Yeah, it was similar to what you. Wait, yeah. Yeah. It, what, it, what, was there a group that screened the resumes before? Yes, that, and well, there was one selection on there, and I don't remember who else. But I, I feel like when it was, because when you know Lynn was stepping down from that yeah. role, mm -hmm. Lynn may have been reading it. She may remember better what we did at the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, and it may have been there was uh, like another person who was willing to uh, screen the resumes. Okay. I think that that group should be small. Like yeah, keep, keep I think it to the, three. I think three people right. be, yep. would be fine. Um, and I think it should probably be someone who will be physically here in the next few months. So while I'm happy to do the outreach and try and help sort out short term yeah. uh, help and support. Um, I think uh, it I'm, might be one. I've actually thought about the composition. I, I would like to take the position that the select board person on that committee. I think that there should be some new works in the building. I think Amy Schrader would be good mm -hmm. as someone mm -hmm. who knows 
the functions in the building. Yeah. And the third person should be someone who's been around for a long time. And the two names that mm -hmm. I thought of would be Lynn, but if you say she's going to be not going to be around. Well, she's only gone for a week and. Uh, oh, it's, it's only okay. It's kind of like. I feel like you might want to. I was, I was well, thinking about key. What's that? Uh, I feel like you might want department head representation mm -hmm. as part mm -hmm. of this process. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, no. And the, the department head representation, I would think either key or Jim. So then you who mm -hmm. both been around the town yeah. a long Jim. time. Jim Savini. Jim Savini. Oh, please, 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 yes, please. of course. Um, any thoughts on who will approach that third slide? Mm -hmm. yeah, but both bring long, yeah, long time knowledge. Of... Sorry, coin. What's that? Uh, I think, you know, a coin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we can go in alphabetical order and the first one turns us down. Is that cool? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think. Lucky the, yeah, but we've already given Keith something. So oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, I I think I'd be okay with either of yeah, those folks. But it, is it appropriate to put it out to both of them and say we're putting it out to both of you? Does one of you? Yeah, you guys want to duke it out? Feel okay. strongly that you'd like to be part of this? Or... I I yeah. can do that. Okay, so. If, okay. if you if it's okay, just give me the discretion to. Yep. I think to go pick, for it. Let's let's go then pick the third person. But I think those three would give us a good representation of the the interests involved okay. to look to look at resumes and okay. see yep. what would work. There okay. So, oh. so we have an approach on both of our. On both of those. Uh, both of the avenues we need, we need to right both things we need to do. So, do we want to pulse that interim position as soon as possible? Yeah. 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 And we don't have to have a second rate number. <laughs> right. And then, in terms of the search committee, I would recommend that the search committee take a look at the job description and the job advertisement. Right, that, that, as soon as possible, because I'd like to get that. The permanent position posted yeah. as soon as we can as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else we need to do on that? No? Okay. Mm -hmm. And Brian, I'll just follow up with you on this yeah. as these things go along. And the, 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 the posting for the interim is something that you'll do in the next day or two? Yeah. And the posting on permanently subject to approval of the job description. Okay. Uh, select board liaison updates. Um, I've got nothing. I've got a meeting that apparently has been canceled for tomorrow. It's supposed to be an update on the highway department. We think it may be canceled. We're not sure yet. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got a scans. We'll be meeting on Thursday, so I got nothing new. Joyce, um, the uh, <laughs> senior center boom has been meeting. We had a couple of little, I call only a little mini retreats. Would be on Saturday morning with muffins over at the um, uh, the Sunderland location, um, and we're kind of um, looking at a couple things. Um, one is we have a mandate to look at our municipal agreement every ten years. Uh, it's been 14 years since we looked at the intermunicipal agreement. Uh, and uh, but somebody did get a grant and get a, a consultant to look at our municipal agreement and give us some ideas about where how we might improve it. Uh, and then we've also got um, a consortium agreement that uh, the South the senior centers for Ashland Buckley, Ashfield <clears throat> and Shelburne use. Um, and it's a, a, a different kind of structure requires an act of the legislature, mm -hmm. but it creates a um, an entity that can purchase property, which would 
in some ways, one of the burdens that we have, like whatever town is housing the facility that we're working on, has to be the fiscal agent. Well, you still need a fiscal agent in this other structure, but you can actually have a, a, like a shared ownership of a facility uh, through this kind of consortium. Uh, now I'm not saying that we're gonna we're doing this right away, but we're basically we're going through that agreement, looking at some pros and cons, looking at ways that other people uh, have given us advice on. Um, the, a couple of things that we kind of agreed upon is that we should um, change something in our agreement so that there's not just three select board members on the board, but we need more input from the people that use the center day to day. Mm -hmm. And um, one candidate might be to see if we can revive our councils on aging. I mean, I think this is, that probably doesn't sound very good, but um, <laughs> we have councils on aging that are not integrated into right. our, our senior center. Yeah. And maybe we should have a conversation about that with yeah. our councils on aging, for example. And so we're, we're looking at all of that. Um, and... Um, that's it. That's what we. That's really what we've been talking about. We have one more meeting um, in a week or two um, to look at the other half of that consortium agreement that we didn't get to at the last meeting. So we're just looking at a lot of things, trying to consider um, if we want to change a little bit uh, or two about the structure mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and which things we think we need. Yes, I think trying to. <clears throat> Get outside or non-select board people yeah. in into the boom meetings to yeah. Yeah. yeah and actually someone from the Deerfield Council on Aging came yeah to okay. our meeting so that was nice yeah because I, I know on Skims who that two people from each town one yeah. is a select board member and the other is not right yes yes so and and that we also had the Skims agreement yeah. with us yeah. um and uh, and I remember that so, yeah. Cool. Sounds okay. productive. That's it for me. Uh, well, we had two whirlwind water department meetings within one week. Woo -woo. Woo -woo. Or within seven days. Um, wanted to follow up on the testing at the Balthazar place. I had mentioned last time that it seemed like the testing sites were very close to each other. Apparently, the dumping site is not very large. I brought that up to the water department and they said it's not very big so 10 feet to 12 feet apart with the testing sites it's not that mm -hmm. it's not that unusual and they're comfortable with it um mm -hmm. if anybody else is not we can, i'm happy to discuss that and bring bring concerns back to them i have not been up there to see that so i can't speak from experience mm -hmm. um they're following up on the dumping that's happening on westbrook road there's been no response yet um, yeah, Keith had looked into that and said it was coming from the construction of the veterans. Oh, um, right. The veterans, yeah. 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 Um, which doesn't mean it's clean film, right. necessarily, but it's not right construction. Based. Exactly. Uh, and they are talking about the treatment plant uh, down off of Chestnut Plain Road and the we have, I guess, a grant to put solar panels on the roof of that, but the roof is apparently about 30 years old, so they're trying to figure out what to do. Don't want to put new solar panels on an old roof, right. and they need to upgrade the wells. Um, and that's something that's very much in process with some engineers, and that I did ask for a visit. So mm -hmm. uh, Wayne and I went down and checked out the uh, treatment plant and the well locations. Now we know where they are. Okay. Yeah. All pretty interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? That's it. Okay. Brian, administrator of this. Yeah, Center School RFP. As you recall, the town received two proposals uh, for, the, for the town to sell the Center School building. Uh, the committee initially met and reviewed both proposals and put together a list of questions that we had sent out to both proposers and the, those responses are due tomorrow. So we'll be setting up a second meeting with the committee to uh, take into account the additional information. And then we'll see what the committee wants to do, whether we want to interview people, interview the proposers or 
Um, we can have that. Yeah, have that we should make a decision and a recommendation to the select board. So that should happen in the next okay. time, hopefully in the next week or two. Town office solar array. Um, ACE Solar has submitted the interconnection application to Eversource. There was some initial back and forth with Eversource and ACE about, so I might understand this better than I. Um, ACE had initially recommended or was hoping that they could move some switching equipment into the pad mounted transformer that's out by the road. And Eversource did not seem to be in favor of that, which may mean that we either need some additional shelter or box outside to put the equipment and then also something about how that might impact the design of the system. So we really need a decision from Eversource as to, on the interconnection application and then we need to figure out what's next and whether that is whether whether Eversource's response is they, they don't want to do it or they can't do it. Mm -hmm. To me, those are two different things. Yeah. So we're we're just really waiting for the, the that decision from Eversource. And then we'll 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 hit the next steps from there. The FY25 budget planning schedule I have included in the packet. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to know if these dates, this is, I think we had seen something similar to this. So, oh, can some, you, not all the same dates. Uh, so, the, the new date here is the February 28th. That's when the schools have availability to come in okay. and talk with the finance committee and select board. Okay. That's Wednesday, February 28th. The other dates, uh, I believe, are the same. And just to note, the, the Frontier Regional Budget Hearing at Frontier is the, uh, Tuesday, March 5th, and the Elementary School Budget Hearing is the following night, uh, March 6th, at Wheatley Elementary. I don't see that on top of the schedule. It used to be, so we have our meeting the 20, Tuesday the 27th, and this Wednesday meeting is a new one that's inserted into that old. Yeah, there was a placeholder previously there. It's always a back and forth with the finance committee and the schools right. to get on the same page. Okay. Right. Yeah. So Tuesday the 20th, I got them. We don't, and we don't have the time. Um, and then that Wednesday. So the 27th is not happening. It's the 28th. Is that... 20, well, 27th is our meeting. Right. right. So we do. That's our board. We have right. our board of select. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Right. This... Okay. So this is a meeting. The 28th is a meeting of our. The 20th. The 27th. It's a joint and meeting the of the finance committee. Got it. And us. Right. And uh, but they're really running. And school committee. Mm -hmm. The discussion mm -hmm. of the frontier. Mm -hmm. And less budgets. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And do we also attend the March 5th and March 6th meetings as select board members? The uh, yes, budget hearings for the schools? The only, at least in the past years, the only solo meetings of the Finance Committee have been the first one, which they've already had, mm -hmm. and the last one when they vote to budget. And they asked for a second one on April 2nd. Oh, they asked for them, okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> The, I have my understanding of the budget hearings. That's a requirement by law that the school committees have to have a public mm -hmm. meeting where there's a budget hearing and they present the budget and they can ask questions. And that's yeah. happening after we'll have heard from them already. So the information is bound to be repetitive. They they would like us to just go to these and not have this. Right. right. My, which In I past years, oh. that's been there. That's great. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but we know that's not going to happen. I've also found that every year, before, just before, especially the Frontier meeting, they say, oh, this is something we published just last night. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Always. So the Tuesday, mm -hmm. March 5th is now, that's a school committee meeting, a Frontier School Committee. So it's not a Correct. board yep. of right. and Okay, so that one, because that one's kind of the only thing anyway. 
Um, so I, I don't think I can make either of those two uh, um, meetings, but the others, I think uh, I came to that. Uh, in the, yeah, the March 5th Frontier hearing and the March 6th elementary mm -hmm. school hearing, school district uses Microsoft Teams, and then it that has caused some technical difficulties for yeah. people. So we'll just keep that in mind. Make sure you can use Microsoft Teams. Mm -hmm. Zoom. March. March 12th is our regular meeting, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Our next regular meeting. Our, well, next, yeah. Okay. I don't know why it's in the calendar as 1.5. Okay. Okay. And um, then March 19th, us and Finance Committee, April. And then Tuesday, the 26th, we have our regular meeting. They our meetings on Sunday. Yeah. Brian, anything else? Any other items? Um, so there's a uh, call with mascot tomorrow. Just an update on the Hayden Bishop project. That this you will call that project is scheduled to be funded in the TIP um, for uh, federal fiscal year 26 with an ad date of October 2025. So very shortly, the town will start the right wing acquisition process. We've done the mechanism before, uh, required title searches, um, seeking uh, reach out to the property owners, see, uh, seeking donations of the property. If they're not willing to donate the property, then the town would uh, do an appraisal of the property and be required to uh, pay fair market value for any of the easements that are required for the project. So, and then it, we have the complicating factor of some of the property being uh, protected by Article 97. That's the city of Mercanton watershed land. And that would require a whole separate process that requires uh, cooperation with the city of Northampton. Um, it's been convincing the city council to uh, petition the state legislature for release of the Article 97 land, which will require uh, the town of Waitley to provide land in mitigation for the Article 97 land that we hope to get removed. We're hoping that's around, it's a pretty small amount, it's around half an acre, depending on what happens with the, their determination in terms of the, the soil nails. If you remember that, that issue where the soil nails yeah. are going to protrude yeah. out of the right of way, underground, but into Article 97 land, we haven't had a determination yet from the state as to whether that constitutes uh, the Article 97 impact that would require mitigation. But if we were just to take that, let's just say there's going to be rectangles that we're going to that we're going to need the land for instead of trying to, I don't know, talk about we need an easement in this location. <laughs> it's easier just to do a rectangle, but it would require more land mitigation. So um, we have identified one parcel that we hope to, um, to figure out uh, and bring with the landowner that we could uh, acquire a portion of it. But that'll that's, those are the next steps that we'll do with that project. And I hope you will leave a fairly detailed brief It'll on this for your success. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's a large project. It's, it's, it's right. I think right now it's about $12 million. So, um, and going you know, up all the time, no doubt. And every day it goes up. Every day it gets more expensive. But luckily, every so. The town financial commitment is the is the right of way acquisition, yeah. and the rest the rest of the project currently is is funded through the tip, Franklin tip. So, okay. Anything else? No. Nope. Motion to adjourn. Yeah, I move we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.